Are you struggling to discipline your toddler without resorting to yelling or hitting? Do you have a problem with your toddler listening to you? If so, you should watch this video and the upcoming series of videos about this topic. I will share and guide you through the art of peaceful parenting and gentle discipline. My practical tips will help you build a loving and gentle relationship with your little one. In each video, I dive deep into various topics related to discipline toddlers with love. So if you haven't watched my first video, make sure after you get done with this video that you go back and watch part one. I am a witness that you can get your young children to listen to you by just showing them love and respect. I'm a mom and a stepmom. My husband and I have nine children together. I never had to yell or hit any of my children to get them to listen to me. My children listen to me because they respect and love me. They love and respect me because I gave it to them and it came back to me in return. Today, we will dive into the significance of staying calm while disciplining toddlers with love. Discipline doesn't require raising your voice or showing anger. Instead, it thrives on staying calm, composed, and emotionally regulated. Toddlers are sensitive to our emotions. You can be a lot more effective in getting your toddler to listen to you by staying calm, and it helps you to think logically. When we stay calm, we model emotional regulation. It teaches our children how to manage their emotions and navigate conflicts. Always remember, when you fall apart and lose your temper, you are teaching your child how to behave when they are upset. And you may ask, how can I stay calm in the midst of tantrums are challenging behavior. Self-awareness helps us to respond truthfully rather than reacting impulsively. What's good about practicing being mindful and self-awareness? You are focused on your behavior, how you should handle the situation, and it's never appropriate to lose your temper. And I do know that we all make mistakes, but the thing about it is you want to recognize it and not to continue to lose your temper and think that it's okay. When my youngest daughter, Ashley, was a toddler, I noticed she went through a season to where she wasn't listening to me. I would tell her not to do something and she would do it anyway. I knew that I needed to do something. It is important for children to listen to their parents. So I did what the average parent does. When I spanked her, I can remember it just didn't feel right for me. And I was just doing it because that's what I've seen other parents do. And I strongly believe that when it comes to raising your children, and if something doesn't feel right, you shouldn't do it. That's when I tap into learning how to raise my children by my instinct instead of what other people says or do. So I made up my mind that I wouldn't do it again. And I felt that there has to be another way besides spanking. I found another alternative and it worked for me. That's why it's good to be self-aware. If something doesn't feel right, don't do it. The benefits of staying calm while discipline are profound. It fosters a sense of security, trust, between parent and child. Additionally, a calm approach nurtures open communication because children feel safe when they are able to express themselves. When they know that they won't face harsh reactions, you're not going to fuss or lose your temper. It's important for your child to feel comfortable enough to talk to you. And it will even help them when they become an adult in their personal relationships. Tip four, 
maintaining calmness. I'm going to share some tips with you to maintain calmness in challenging moments. Take deep breaths. This helps in regaining composure. Give yourself a break. If needed, step away, if only just to gain your thoughts. Stay in your character. Remind yourself that you are guiding with love and patience. And treat your child the way that you want to be treated. If you want someone to communicate with love and kindness, then you should do the same with your child. Remember, staying calm is a continuous practice. We all make mistakes. What matters is our effort to create a loving and nurturing environment. Keep trying and don't give up. Questions for today. Do you desire to raise your children in a calm and peaceful environment? What is stopping you from achieving your goal? If you enjoyed this video and you would like me to create more content about this topic, let me know by leaving a comment. Thank you for joining me today. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content about this topic. And also, click on the notification bell so that you will be notified when I upload a new video. Until next time, embrace the journey of parenting with love and patience. Bye.